Okay, you ready for part two? Here it is. <laughs> Where I left off, I mentioned that the bison was hit and rolled off the hood of the car and had crawled off the side of the road. I was on the back floor. I had turtle shelled Theron. Bridger had hit me in the back when he rolled off the back seat. Austin was driving. Mary Jo was riding in the passenger seat. The second that we realized that we we're all alive, Austin said, do you want me to kick out the windshield? <laughs> Mind you, um, the picture I'm gonna put again right here. You see how the the windshield was caved in I think Austin was worried about being able to see so both me and Mary Jo said no and Mary Jo traded places with Austin and so Austin was now in the passenger seat Mary Jo was in the driver's seat and it was really cold outside but because we did not have um, a headlight on the right side and we couldn't see out of the windshield. Um, instantly you could smell the, like a hot car, you could smell that it was overheating. And so basically, um, we just kept watching it and Mary Jo, you know, put it in drive to see if it'll drive to make sure that we weren't stranded. And um, we were on our way. Austin had the window rolled down and was watching for bison, watching for animals, more animals, because it was a herd. It wasn't just one bison, it was an entire herd. And Mary Jo, I'd, I'd thrown a towel up to Mary Jo and she wrapped her hands um, so that her hands weren't, she wasn't, anyways, trying to keep her warm as she was driving. And every so often, Austin would yell out bison and Mary Jo would stop and let the bison pass and we just kind of inch our way through the herd and it was like that for a good hour at least and <clears throat> I, I think I was nervous because I didn't know at what point the car was gonna not run anymore because you could smell the you could smell the antifreeze or whatever anyways there was a diesel that was that we could see coming behind us and I had hollered out for my aunt to stop, and she did. I climbed out of the car and was trying to flag down the diesel, and it just zoomed past us. It went around us and went, it went, didn't bother stopping. And so I got back in the car, and I remember thinking at that moment in time um, that we were in big trouble. We were in the middle of nowhere, our cell phones didn't work, um, we had no help. And at any given time, because the windshield was shattered, um, I was worried that we were done, that we were gonna, I don't know, I don't think we would have died, but also I'm hypoglycemic. So my thinking process at this point, I think we had gone well over 12 hours without eating because as our drive was going on, we didn't have, um, there wasn't anywhere to stop because of the time of year. Everywhere that we would have stopped or we did stop on the way up was not open because of the time of year that we were traveling down. And so we had, <clears throat> we had put gas in the vehicle with the gas cans on the back of the van. As we were inching along, I just kind of felt this urgency that we had to do something drastic, especially after that diesel didn't stop. Um, we, I kept watching for the gauge on the car to see if we were overheating because it smelled awful. Um, and it, you know, we just kept on going with what we were doing. And anyway, there was a car coming toward us and I could see the headlights and I yelled out for Mary Jo and I said, Hey, stop. I'm going to flag him down. And <clears throat> I think this is where the story kind of goes. Squampus, or I'm on the on the floor behind the passenger seat. We had a stow and go seating. We had the very back row that was open and um, or that was up. The kids were using, and the seat on the far left was available, 
but the seating on the far right behind the passenger seat, we had put that into the ground so that we could lay down and sleep and things like that. Anyway, so I was sitting on top of sleeping bags and stuff with Theron. Um, mind you, nobody got hurt during the incident with the bison. I think I bit my lip and Bridger bit his lip. But other than that, like, we were, we were fine. Um, anyways, when I yelled out, I saw the headlights and instantly, I think my motherly instincts kicked in. And I was, um, I went kind of in a panic mode thinking I had to um, get help. And I'm sorry if I get emotional here. I remember thinking I had to save my kids, that it was my job as the mother to save my kids. And I kept thinking my game plan was to, to flag down this car and they would have a satellite phone or they could drive us to safety or something. I just, I thought more could happen if I got help. And um, anyways, I opened up the van door and as soon as the van door clicked open, my body thought that that was the car stopping and we were not stopped yet. We were still, I think we had gotten to a point where there weren't any animals and we were probably doing 25 to 30 miles an hour. And um, I climbed out because I thought the car was stopped. And instantly, as soon as I reached out, I realized we weren't stopping, it was too late. So I hit the ground on my knees um, and I remember thinking on the movies, tuck and roll. <laughs> when I tried pulling my legs up to, to roll, um, I felt the back tires run over my lower legs. And um, I instantly knew <laughs> that I made a big mistake. Sorry. <clears throat> when I was laying on the road, um, because when I climbed out, I had my glasses on. I believe I had a hat on. I remember having a hat on. <clears throat> and I had my shoes on. And I remember laying on the road and looking under the van and seeing the headlights still coming. And I literally did a check. I'm like, hat, glasses, my shoes, everything was on. So I figured if nothing had fallen off, I must not. it must not have been that bad. And so I hopped up and ran to the front of the car and began to flag, tried to flag down with both my arms this car. Um, instantly, um, when I got ran over, Austin had um, watched that incident in the rear or in the side mirror because remember he was he was yelling out and watching for animals. Um, so he had watched me get hit or ran over. Um, and the kids in the back seat felt the van hit run over me. Mary Jo stopped um, and Austin yelled. I remember hearing him say, you, ran, you just ran over my mom. <laughs> but she was stopped. I ran to the front of the car and was wave, trying to wave down the car. I dislocated my right shoulder during that time when I climbed out. And um, so I couldn't even raise my right arm and the car stopped and rolled down its window like this far. And my aunt said, we hit a bison, we're in trouble, can you help us? And they, um, they said that 40 miles down the road, there's a, um, a stop or a whatever. It was actually Laird Hot Springs. We were 40 miles away from there. I went to walk back to the car and I could, I could barely walk and I am, Instantly, I felt like I made the biggest mistake of my life, and I knew it, and I just kept saying, I'm so sorry. I didn't mean that. I didn't mean to do that. And uh, my aunt was, <laughs> we had said a few choice words, and she's like, what the, what, are you, what did you do? And I'm like, I didn't mean to. I was just trying to save my kids. And, um, mind you, um, my mind was definitely not in the right place at the time because I really honestly thought I was helping. When in reality, that I should have stayed in the car. I don't even know what I was thinking. 
I got in the car and Austin jumped to my rescue and he was like, what do you need? What do you need? And uh, I knew I was in shock. And when I laid on the floor, I got in the car and I just collapsed. Um, I remember thinking of a moment with my mom when I was younger. Um, when we were little, my mom shared with me when someone dies, they lose all function of their bowels. <laughs> and I tell you this because when I laid there in the back of the van, I remember thinking I might lose control of my I had to pee so bad and instantly it wasn't like I had to before but I, I couldn't I was like oh my gosh and then I was thinking I'm gonna die and um, I think it was my body going into shock but I remember thinking relating to that moment when I was little and having that conversation with my mom but um Austin wrapped me in the sleeping bags and I just laid there and I got to a position where I could um still watch the temperature gauge on the car it still smelled really bad and I remember thinking if anything I can focus on would be to watch to watch the temperature gauge on the vehicle and that would take my mind off of how I was feeling and um, my legs were on fire um, I could feel that there was blood all over in my right shoe like I couldn't get my shoe off it was like it would create a suction cup or whatever my foot to my shoe and um, I just laid there and um, basically just I don't know if it was convulsions but I was shaking like I was freezing I wasn't cold but I remember thinking this is it I'm gonna die <laughs> right here in front of my kids over a stupid mistake um, but we just kept inching to Laird Hot Springs and we, when we finally pulled in um, to the rest stop, Mary Jo ran in. I'm going to stop the story right there. Um, the next part is the fun ride down the mountain in the ambulance. Hypoglycemia is a real deal, guys. <laughs> so stupidity. <laughs> um, Anyway, that's part two. Hope you guys, um, it's a hard story to tell. It's a hard story to, um, to share. I've wanted to do it for a long time, but not like this. Um, but I'd rather have the story out there. So, I don't know, I'd like to, I, I wanna be able to write a book about it, I don't know. I don't know that I can, but it'd be a fun book, right? So far, anyways, that is uh, where we are with that part of the story. Thanks guys for watching and we'll see you tomorrow. Bye.